All right, lads and ladies, and welcome to Big Dave's Big Reviews with your mate, Big Dave. This episode, I'll be counting down my top 10 favourite moments from season one of Ass and the Dragon. Now, I know what you're all wondering. Will that creepy foot fetish scene make the top 10? But there's only one way to find out. So stick around for the full list that will be right up after this very short theme tune. In at number 10, we have Aemon and Vagar killing Luke and Arix from episode 10. Now I'm sure some of you lot would have had this scene much higher up, but hear me out. Yes, we do get to witness our first dragon or dragon action, which is bloody amazing of course, but I wasn't blown away by the CGI. I guess with it being Storm's End, you have to set the fight to the backdrop of a big storm, but something about the look of it wasn't right to my eye. That being said, this scene really delivered on the tension, as I'm sure we were all hoping little Luke and Arax somehow got away from Aemon and his Godzilla dragon Vagar. It also highlighted the fact that these are boys we're talking about, and they clearly don't have good control on their dragons yet. We see this as Arax fireballs Vagar in the face against Luke's wishes, really not a smart move, and Aemon is faring no better trying to stop Vagar from munching the pair. Still, this scene delivers high drama to end the season on, and leaves us in no doubt that war is now inevitable. At 9, it's the one and only Pink Dread from episode 6. This scene is set in the glorious looking dragon pit and features a young Jaceres getting to know his baby dragon Vermax. Firstly, this scene has some really solid CGI. Vermax looks Jurassic Park real, which is good as you can really see him giving that poor goat the T-Rex treatment, but with added fire. Secondly, I really like how this scene gives us viewers more insight into the dragon and rider relationship, something not really touched on in Game of Thrones. It was also nice to see that Alison and Rhaenyra's lads seem to be getting on well, growing up together, sparring together and so on. I particularly like that Luke and Jace are in on the joke played on Aemond by his cheeky brother Aegon. Aegon tricks Aemond into believing that a dragon has become available for him to bond with. That's particularly cruel considering that as far as I can tell, all the kids have bonded with dragons by now except for Aemon. Anyways, who doesn't love a good wind up and that's exactly what we get here as the dragon turns out to be none other than a pig called the Pink Dread. This scene was a good laugh and delivered some much needed brevity in an otherwise pretty dark show. Next is Rhaenyra's wedding from episode 5. Now let me tell you, I've been to more than my fair share of weddings that got, shall we say, a little bit tasty. But even I've yet to see a bloke beat another bloke to death on the dance floor, though there's been a few close scrapes. The scene starts with poor weak King Viserys being undermined by his own wife as she walks in during the middle of his speech. I thought it was very kind of the writers to have a couple of characters spell this out for us Muppets do. We also see a lot of characters who were generally happy at this time, such as King Viserys. Laenor and Rhaenyra are also happy as they've found a way to do their duty but still sleep with who they want to. Even the Sea Snake and Radis are having a good time too. This of course ends abruptly when Kristen Cole, who is certainly not having a good time, batters Laenor's boyfriend to death with absolutely no one bothering to stop him. As Mrs Big Dave always tells me in situations like this, Big Dave, stay out of it! So I guess everyone at this wedding has heard her advice too. At 7 is the Knights of Summer from episode 1. What better way to really get the first episode up and running than a good old joust and duel between Damon Targaryen and Kristen Cole. Now by this point in the show, the writers have made it pretty bloody obvious that Damon is a naughty boy. First by leading a brutal gold cloak lockdown on King's Landing, then by having him use his big stick to cheat in the previous joust by attacking his opponent's horse. So naturally, we the viewer are somewhat rooting for Kristen Cole at this time, or at least I was anyway and I rather enjoyed seeing him morning star the little Herbert in the back whilst he was celebrating. And it's not all fighting and jousting, as this scene is mixed in with Queen Emma's struggle to give birth to a breech baby. Now obviously the writers are trying to show the juxtaposition between men killing for sport and women fighting to deliver life, and yes, it's done in a way that's about as subtle as my Friday night shirts, but that doesn't stop it being effective, because it is. It's also the first time I realised that Paddy Cosendine can really act, Oh, and Damon's dragon how it looked bloody fantastic. Right, at 6, it's Aemon, Jack and Vagar from the Valerians in episode 7. This entry sees that cheeky little bugger Aemon nicking the biggest, baddest dragon around. 
I love this scene for getting across the fucking enormous size and power of Dragon Vagar, whilst also giving us a glimpse of the Dragon Rider bonding process. From what I can tell, this bonding process consists of telling a dragon to obey in High Valerian, so it's about as complicated as starting a Tesla. Now whilst I felt that House of the Dragon didn't manage to improve the CGI scenes that show close-ups of characters riding dragons, and something about the tiny Aemon riding Vagar struck me as a bit Harry Potter-like, it's still a great scene. But just to solidify its spot in my list, I'm gonna cheat and also include the subsequent child fight between Aemon and the Valerian children. I think the sudden brutality in this scene shocked a few people, but if you've been paying attention, you'd know they've been training these young lads for violence all their lives, so it's hardly surprising that they grab the fighting cutlery quicker than your average grass region. At five, it's Damon and Rhaenyra's big night out from episode four. Who said a good scene couldn't be ridiculously uncomfortable? Certainly not me, and that's how this one makes it in at number five. Damon takes his very young niece Rhaenyra off to a jolly night out. You know, the usual routine, play, pub, restaurant, brothel, all standard stuff. I really liked how this scene showed a window into what the common folk get up to of a night in King's Landing. It also displayed the contrast between Rhaenyra having fun, doing what she wants, and Alison being the dutiful wife and mother, caring for both her baby and her husband King Viserys. The scene helped us get to know three of our main characters that much better, and also leads to Rhaenyra and Kristen Cole getting it on. And as we now know, it's this bout of lovemaking that results in Sir Cole basically going off the deep end and revealing himself to be a bit of a nasty bastard. At number four, it's Give Me That Eye Bitch from episode seven. This tense scene sees Queen Alicent go in full revenge mode as she seeks revenge against Rhaenyra's lads for blinding her son Aemon in one eye. Now my old mum was always quick to pull a blade in any situation, but even she never waved one around as recklessly as Alicent does here. What I really loved in this scene is the dialogue. The writers clearly showed that they understood their characters, and in particular, the two leading ladies. We see Rhaenyra pointing out Alicent's holier-than-now attitude, and Alicent retorted by saying that Rhaenyra has done whatever she wanted all her life while she's been dutifully looking after her sick father. Both women are correct in what they say, but that does nothing to narrow the divide between them. In fact, this scene really highlights how insurmountable the animosity is between the two families, and again shows how ineffective Viserys' leadership is. He thinks him saying it's over means the matter's settled, but it's obvious to everyone else that it's far from it. What a brilliantly written scene, expertly acted by the cast, great stuff. Oh, and as a bonus, it also features my favourite line from the show, delivered by young Eamon. Do not mourn me, mother. It was a fair exchange. I may have lost an eye, but I gained a dragon. What a little badass. At three, it's Lane of Valarian going out on her own terms from episode six. If there's one thing George R.R. R. Martin seems to love writing about, it's death in childbirth. Now, of course, it's somewhat understandable given how common an occurrence it was during this historical period that the show's based on, but my god, it's tough to watch. So it was almost uplifted to see Lady Valarian take destiny into her own hands and choose how her and her child's lives would end. And big props to her for choosing the most badass way to go, death by your own dragon's fire on a moonlit beach. I absolutely loved the reluctance from Vagar to harm her mistress, and particularly poignant was the moment just before the end where a look of understanding seemed to pass between Lena and Vega, Lena seemed to finally relax right before the end, as she knew Vega had understood why she wanted her to kill her. Moving, emotional, brilliant stuff. Oh, and it cemented Vega as my favourite dragon. In second place, it's The Last Supper from Episode 8. Now, I'm somewhat of an expert on awkward family meals, but this one takes the biscuit. We see King Viserys make a final play to unite his warring family. Paddy Constantine really delivers here yet again as he besieges them seemingly from his very soul. And it may just have worked as Alicent and Rhaenyra toast each other, perhaps finally reconciling. Rhaenyra acknowledges the devotion Alicent has shown her father, and Alicent sees Rhaenyra to be the strong mother she is, and how her boys have turned out to be far less maladjusted than her own lads. But it's not all wine and roses, as the younger generation just can't resist another dig at each other once the king leaves. Either by design or accident, a pig is placed in front of Aemon, harking back to the pig dread scene. So of course Aemon fires back with a toast, emphasising how strong they are, and an obvious dig at their parentage. The final stare down between Daemon and Aemon is a classic too, with Daemon scolding the young dragon. Still, really good stuff from episode 8 yet again. And of course, my number one moment from season 1 of House of the Dragon, 
is the weird foot fetish masturbation seat. Only kidding. It's of course King Viserys' agonizing final walk to the Iron Throne. It's a perfect scene. The build up to it sees the Greens getting increasingly smug as they hold court. They humiliate Rhaenyra and her family in front of the great and good of King's Landing by allowing Vaymon Velaryon to make a public case for his inheritance of the Driftmark. Everyone knows the implications of this and it's clear that Otto in particular is reveling in the humiliation. Then suddenly the great doors open as the music begins and we see Viserys somehow on his feet stepping agonizingly to the throne. The score is wonderful, incredibly emotional yet understated and the reaction shots of the various characters are done superbly. And to top it all, we get the incredibly emotional moment of Damon picking up his brother's crown and helping him complete his journey. Now Mrs Big Dave will tell you I cried the first and maybe second time I watched this bit, but she's obviously wrong. <laughs> oh yeah, and one final nice touch is they actually do a good job of showing just how sharp Valyrian still is, as Damon introduces his sword, Dark Sister, to Vaiman's face. Rewatching this scene, you have to think Paddy Constantine asked the makeup team how much makeup they were putting on him and they replied, yes. How he managed to pull off looking so noble whilst also looking like a soggy ball bag, I'll never know. But as I've said before, give that man an Emmy. My main reason for making this scene my number one is that it managed to elevate House of the Dragon season one in a very important way. Namely, that as good as the show had been, there wasn't that one scene that you could mention down the pub and everyone would say, yeah, that was incredible. Or, yeah, I heard Big Dave cry during it. Early Game of Thrones had plenty of examples of this, such as Ned's death, the Red Wedded, or Danny's nudie dragon birthing scene, to name just a few. So for me, it's good to know that House of the Dragon can now add to that list the Viserys throne walk. It's the cherry on top of a delicious entertainment cake. Right, I thought I'd give you lovely lot a few honourable mentions. Firstly, there's the Crab Sushi King. Yes, I included this as a mention of my dumbest scenes of House of the Dragon. Go watch the video to find out why. But this scene was a really well shot action sequence and it was fantastic to see one of the coolest dragons, Sea Smoke, in all his small silvery glory. Next, the Royal Hunt. I had to include this just so I could show the difference between the Royal Hunt of House of Dragons and that of King Robert Baratheon in the Game of Thrones. I mean, look at how they did my boy Robert dirty back then. Lastly, we've got Raidus and Melis crashing the party. I know a lot of people love this scene, but I didn't rate the CGI and the fact she butchered hundreds of common folk without anyone mentioning it seemed a bit odd. Although admittedly, quite funny. So there's my list. What did you think? Was Big Dave spot on or miles off with his selection? Let me know down in the comments below. Always room for a bit of banner. Bloody hell, you made it to the end of the show. Well done you. Now, if you could be a diamond and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, that will make sure we can keep in touch in future. Please also drop a like on the video and maybe even comment below. A bit of banner is always welcome. I'd like to wish you all the best. Until next time.